My name is Nikki. I'm an English makeup artist and I live with Carlo and our daughter Skye in Positano, Italy. Our house is far from the road but surrounded by fruit trees and olive groves and we grow our own food. We'll show you what it's really like to live on the Amalfi Coast. Subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. Welcome to another video. Before we start, I just want to get a couple of points across. I got a new camera, which you would have seen if you watched the last vlog, and yesterday I was still learning how to use it, and I didn't realize that to turn on the stabilization, you have to turn off the product showcase. This is a Sony ZV-1, by the way, and it's a funny little quirk that it's got that the stabilization won't work if you have the product showcase on. So yesterday's footage, where we went to the beach, is a bit shaky. So I'm sorry about that. I'm learning, live and learn. Um, and as of today, I've turned it on. So hopefully today's footage will be less shaky. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Now I came out to take a few photos and look what I found instead. That's why I heard the helicopter earlier. Oh dear. It is 5.30 in the morning, it's not quite daylight yet, but I thought I'd better come out and check the fire because it was pretty bad last night and it smells very strongly of smoke here. The bonus of being where I am is that I don't actually have to get dressed to do this, so hopefully I won't bump into anybody. So it is actually further away than I thought it was last night. It's much closer to Praiano than it is to here. It is very smoky. You can smell it very heavily in the air and there is ash everywhere and you can see all the ash now this is everywhere all across the garden it is now five to eight they said that the first helicopter would come at eight and i can hear one First helicopter. I am off to the beach to have lunch with Elizabeth. Just climbed all the steps. I can't talk at the moment. I'll get back to you. Just stopped on the side of the road to have a look at the fire damage from here. It looks like they've got quite a lot of it out, but it's burning in a lot of different places. It's a little bit rough today, so all the boat trips have been cancelled, which means Elizabeth is off work and I'm going to go meet her for lunch at Da Ferdinandos. I have spotted Nicola over there. No doubt he's waiting for Sky, but he's probably lending a hand to any of these boats that are trying to load and offload people because it's not the safest. Couldn't have asked for more timing for a little bit of cloud cover while I do this cliffside walk to Fornillo. It's just gone cloudy. I hope it stays that way. It'd be even better if it rains because that would help put the fire out. Thank <laughs> you. 
And I thought it was just me, Elizabeth and the girls, um, but because the sea's rough, it's actually most of the Blue Star crew because they've got nothing else to do today and they're still being paid, so they're all having lunch at Ferdinando. Now that is a good day's work. Unfortunately, it is too hot to enjoy the view, so the view is going to have to go. Guarda, ci sono spazi. Posso toccare? Eccoci qua. Opla. Adesso tocca a te. Pugge, papà. E mettere i cimbi tutta la parte di cose là. Era buono, ma tanto, tanto. And now as we're on our way back home, a little fire update. It's pretty much all been put out. There's that one tiny little fire up there still. And we had a Canada and two helicopters working away all day. Nicola has a tough job to do now. He has got to go out to the little rubber boat, which is quite a way out. And uh, then go over to the boats and just check that they're all okay because there's a couple of wooden boats that the build I think it's the builders, I think that's the word, something needs to be checked anyway. I've told Sky to tell him that it's safer to put the kayak in from the little boat dock around the corner because the waves are very rolling here and he's not going to get in in time. the rolling waves with this thing. I would even call it a kayak, it's like a tub. And it's too dangerous. If he's got to go to the Gamorna, he has to swim there. Okay, like... The little boat they have to go to is the first one you can see that just flipped up there. See, it's very rough. I really don't like 
this idea. Failed. You failed. See you okay. tomorrow morning. <laughs> Bye. Me again. Um, sometimes you may think that my life here is absolutely stunning, absolutely amazing, and there's fun things to do every day. And what I wanted to just remind you was that these videos that I make are the highlight reels of my life. There is plenty of normal mundane days where I'm cleaning and cooking and doing all those things that everybody has to do. Yes, admittedly, I'm doing it in a lovely setting, but I have to do them too. I just wanted you to remember that the videos that I put out on YouTube amount to about 35, 40 minutes of my whole week. So you're not seeing everything, you're just seeing the best bits, the fun things. And I think that's what you want to see. Just for a little bit of reality though, I'm gonna put a little montage of how this morning went just so you know, and this is Carlo's day off today, so we were both at home and we had quite a few things to do. Ho acceso la stabilizzazione. Stabilizzazione. Stabilizzatore. Ho acceso la stabilizzazione. I still can't say it. So Julia's question is about the fire. Um, she wants to know, it's, it's not a one-time thing, it's happened many times before. Is it set on purpose or is it a natural thing? I don't know. Allora, certamente non abbiamo 
una sicurezza, però chiaramente quasi tutti gli incendi, il 90% sono uh, come si dice, volontari. Sì. Non sono incidenti. So, fire-wise, in the last few years there was a very, very bad fire above Monte Petuso. That was actually caused by fireworks when they did the Festa of Monte Petuso on a very windy night. And the fireworks landed, the sparks landed and set fire to the mountain and that raged on for days and days. Apparently, around three in the morning, they had actually managed to put all those fires out. But the next morning when everyone woke up, there was huge fires, um, not in the same areas. So further up so they're pretty sure that arsonists took that opportunity to go and light more fires and create more havoc. So after that they were very very careful about when they lit the fireworks and if it was windy it was immediately cancelled. There was also another very big fire a few years ago which started because somebody's car caught fire and she pulled over to the side of the road, the mountain side of the road, and the fire in the car went up caught fire to the mountain and it spread across the whole coast road. It was terrible. Um, so they're not always arsonists, but a lot of the fires, especially these ones last week, were caused by arsonists who have not been caught. I mean, it's very hard to catch somebody who does that because all they need to do is flick a match and run. And it's in the middle of nowhere. This was in the summer of July 2017. This was the fire that was set after the fireworks had caught fire to the mountain um, after the Monte Petuso festival and the arsonists had taken the opportunity to light more fires that came out of control because it was pretty windy that week. We received a phone call that we should move our car from the car park in Monte Petuso where it was parked which was very near the fire and we ended up going down to our scooter and driving around town and then driving back up towards Monte Petuso to get the car. This is the scariest part here where we're actually very, very close to the fire and it was absolutely terrifying driving past that. Um, our car was parked about 100 metres from here and there was also many, many gas canisters in this area, which is where the gas is stored that were being moved by locals to a safer place. And um, yes, we moved our car onto the football pitch, which is where everybody was allowed to park for the next few days until the fires were put out. And then uh, that was it. Uh, after a few days, the fires were brought under control. And then about a month or so later, I took a walk in the local woods to see the damage of the fire. Now, I did put that video on YouTube and hardly anybody watched it. Um, so I'm going to post a little bit of that here for you to see what the mountain looks like after a fire has raged through it. I'm taking the dog for a quick walk in at the Pinetta, the pine forest. This is where there were um, big fires about a month ago now. So we're going to go see what's happened. So this is the first sign of where the fire reached. the earth. This is the worry. It hasn't rained here for over six months now. If there's a sudden rainstorm, a heavy rain, all of this is just gonna wash down the mountain and cause massive landslides. Very sad and very scary for when it starts raining. Everything will grow back. It'll take time but eventually the pinetta will be green again.
look very stormy. Seems to be quite traditional that on the last day of August, uh, summer ends with a bang and a big thunderstorm. It's looking very windy out there. Look at the sea. Did you follow me? It still seems to be a tiny bit smoky over there and it's starting to rain. Whether it will get stronger, I don't know, but I hope it does because that would help douse the flames. Are you waiting for me? You don't want to go for walkies, do you? It's starting to rain. Carlos pulled the cover over the pool because it's been so windy and all the leaves were blowing in. Carlo is summoning me, Cosa. E hey, lei di cosa è quella? Quella pianta? Sì, è una pianta. Adesso ti faccio vedere che cos'è, perché io ho già capito che cos'è. Si vede chiaramente dalla foglia. Ah, è un avocado? Sì, ha mangiato l'avocado e buttato via, guarda. Uh, it's sprouted in the compost. Yeah. Should we grow it? Sì, adesso questo lo trapentiamo e mettiamo in un vaso. Ok. Subito. Perfect. We wanted an avocado tree. Sì, Pretty sure we need a male and a female. Così non dobbiamo più comprarli, li mangiamo direttamente dal giardino. I don't think it quite works like that, but we'll give it a go. Forse fra 20 o 30 anni, se amaremo già morti, non lo so. Mm.